Hi guys, how are you? I hope excellent. I wanna to talk today about the ego and consciousness. And I'm gonna ask you a question. What is ego? What does that mean? What is the idea of ego? And where does the ego exist? <clears throat> Where does the ego function and thrive? Can we see it? Can we taste it? Can we hear it? How do we experience ego? How do you experience ego? And then the opposite is the idea of consciousness and, and how do you experience consciousness? And what does that mean? to be conscious. So my idea of the ego is one that uh, is completely false and entirely illusory. Uh, it doesn't exist, especially in the tangible world. <clears throat> it doesn't even exist in our sense of self. I mean, it's not, it, this is tricky. It's really hard to define because we're going to say that yes, our egos exist very much. This is who we are. Uh, but I'm going to challenge you to maybe think about it in a different way. Are you sure that you are your ego? And what does that mean? So I'm going to define ego and I'm gonna define it in my own unusual way. And that's, I think that our, our egos are created, developed during the first seven years that defines uh, who we are in a, a personality type sense. And the reason that it's the first seven years has to do with uh, where our brain wave frequencies reside and that's in theta which is just a lower brainwave frequency. In this realm of theta, the, the brain basically is a sponge uh, and it just absorbs all of the content that it's surrounded by. And so children are not, they're not even consciously aware that they're being programmed. They're just sponges to everything that unfolds in their life during, during that time. And then after the age of seven, that's where we just start to strengthen those foundational core constructs of what we call our sense of self. And this is what we use to define ourselves, to strengthen ourselves. And, and this is where duality is born. It's born from ego. You can't have or reside in a dualistic society environment uh, without ego. It's the ego that needs to make things right and make things wrong, uh, that needs to either be weak or strong. You understand. You understand the ideas and all those dualistic traps. We all were born knowing and understanding that we are essentially conscious beings. And what does that mean? What does it mean to be a conscious being? I think that is the place that is beyond the scope of ego or hubris or sense of self. It's a higher place of functioning, I think, uh, of living, of, of, you know, Buddhists consider it waking up from the dream of this reality and they regard this reality as a dream. Uh, and you know, based on quantum physics, this is a uh, this objective reality is an illusion. It's actually not real. And how on earth could it be if it's created and and utilized uh, by the by the hubris, by the sense of self, by this false sense of identity that uh, that just tricks us and keeps us trapped into believing. Um, that things are either good or bad, 
and that we are either right or wrong. And the more that we buy into this, the more that we strengthen these habits, uh, the more that we create um, polarization between ourselves and then the others. You know, an example could be someone who's not spiritually awoke, someone who it just remains in, in a place of ignorance. And I could say, oh, that, that's so wrong of them. How could they not want to wake up and, and find their way to happiness and joy and help other people to not suffer so much by using compassion um, through experience. We develop compassion through experiencing loving kindness for ourselves and others. And really the only way that we can have this deep rooted, really genuine sense of compassion is through letting go of the sense of self. It's through letting go of, um, of making things right and wrong because that immediately closes us down and we feel like we need to protect ourselves. We need to protect from anything that falls outside of the realm of normal and only you know and can define what normal is in your own reality. But by doing so, we close our hearts down and then we are not there for others and we can't, uh, you know, we're not able to help. So that was a roundabout way of saying this is not uh, what, what I plan to do. I plan to keep my heart open. I plan to not use uh, ego and dualism to strengthen my sense of self and that, well, I'm on the right path and everyone else is wrong. Because what that does is it creates more confusion and more aggression and even more passion on this planet and all three are considered poisons. Uh, in the Buddhist tradition. And it makes a lot of sense. You know, uh, sadly, everybody is walking around on a daily basis practicing aggression and practicing passion and, and practicing ignorance. And every time you engage in, in a, any of those, those behaviors, you work, you're increasing. I'm increasing. We, as a collective energy, are increasing those behaviors and those outcomes because all of those breed fear and they strengthen the ego in a very negative way but the ego doesn't care it just wants food it just wants fuel uh, it wants you to react so today i'm going to find a middle way um, and I'm actually, I'm on that path. I slept four hours last night. I woke up at midnight and I have absolutely no idea why that is. Uh, I don't always do so well with, with lack of sleep. I'm someone who typically sleeps nine hours uh, and loves to feel rejuvenated and you know refreshed and very clear. Uh, I prefer to be very clear-minded and a lack of sleep makes me incredibly fuzzy and uh, it is sort of like an on switch for depression for me. And instead of using that today, I'm allowing and I'm, I'm choosing the middle way. I'm choosing the conscious path. I'm not making things right and I'm not making them wrong. I'm going about uh, each moment in the experience of just being. And, and that's just being alive. And it's actually pretty powerful. Once you find yourself, once you find your way, it's empowering, it's freeing. Um, especially when we can find some lesson or wisdom in all of our experiences, all of them have all of this richness, this aliveness, this, it's, it's precious. Every moment of our life can be precious when we are living this way in the moment. 
free from dualism, free from ego, and just being fully alive. So I'm gonna leave you with this question. How do you define ego? What does that mean to you? Have you ever thought about the fact that you have an ego and what does that mean? Is it who you are? Is it something separate? Is your ego your mind? I'd love a, I'd love a comment for all you who <laughs> made it through my 11 minute video. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen. And I hope that you find a little bit of middle way today and may it bring you joy and happiness and peace and love, especially love. Take care and be well.